In this video, I'll be going through the 2021 Electricity and Electromagnetism exam. Question 1. Bob is investigating circuits in the laboratory and starts with the circuit shown below. The voltage across the 12 ohm resistor is 8 volts. Calculate the current in the circuit. For this we will need Ohm's law, which we can solve for current by dividing both sides by resistance. Where we know the voltage is 12 volts, and the resistance, because this is a series circuit, is going to be at 12 and 6 ohms summed together. Putting our numbers in, gives me 0.667 amps to three significant figures. Calculate the amount of energy converted to heat in one hour in the 6 ohm resistor. For this we need to use the equation that power is the change in energy over time, Multiplying both sides by time gives us the change in energy equals PT, where we know that our T is 1 hour, which is 3600 seconds, 60 times 60. But what we don't know is our power. To find our power, we need to use the fact that P equals IV, where we know the current through the resistor since we just found it, but we don't know the voltage. For that, we need to use Ohm's law again, V equals IR where we know, of course, our current, and we know our resistance of 6, which gives me 4 volts. Now looking over to our power, we of course once again know our current. We can multiply that by our voltage, which gives me a power of 2.67 watts. Now finally, for our energy equation, we have everything we need. And that gives me 9,610 joules to three significant figures. Question C. Bob has a lamp that operates normally only when it is connected to 8 volts. He connects it in parallel with the 12 ohm resistor. Without further calculation, explain why Bob's lamp will not operate normally when connected this way. Now if we look at our above question, we determined that our 6 ohm resistor is consuming 4 volts. And since our voltages in our circuits add, that means that we must indeed have 8 volts across this resistor. However, we can't ignore the influence that adding this part of the circuit will have. Essentially what we're doing is we are connecting a resistor in parallel. What that does is not only can the current flow through this resistor, but now it has an extra pathway it can flow through, which makes it possible for more current to flow in the circuit. We've added another pathway, so the current increases. Consequently, if the circuit current increases, then the current through this resistor here is going to increase. And since we know that V equals IR, since our resistance is fixed, if our current increases, then so too must the voltage used by this particular resistor. Since this resistor is now using more than its 4 volts, it's taking up more of this 12 volts which leaves less for these resistors here. All that is to say that by adding this extra bulb, we increase the current, which increases the voltage used by this resistor, which decreases the voltage across here, and so our lamp is not going to get that 8 volt it needs. Let me try and put that into words. Adding the lamp adds another pathway for the current, and therefore increases the total current in the circuit. This means that the current through the 6 ohm resistor will increase, which via V equals IR will increase the voltage it consumes. This means the voltage across the lamp will be less, and it will not receive the 8 volts it requires to function correctly. Question D. Bob finds another lamp that has a resistance of 4.57 ohms. He connects this lamp in the original circuit in parallel with the 6 ohm resistor. Calculate the voltage across this lamp. So if we call the voltage across our lamp VL, the voltage across our lamp is going to be the same as the voltage across our 6 ohm resistor, and basically the voltage across this entire section here. Now via Kirchhoff's voltage law, this voltage across our lamp is going to be our source voltage, our 12 volts right here, minus the voltage in our 12 ohm lamp here, V12 we'll call it, which means we need to find our V12. 
And so the voltage across our 12 ohm resistor is via Ohm's law going to be the current in the circuit times our resistance of our 12 ohm resistor, which is 12. So just to be clear, our 12 is 12 ohms. Problem is, we don't know our current. So we need to find that. Now we know, of course, that V equals IR, Ohm's law. And we've already looked at that I, our current, is equal to V over R. So to find the current in our circuit, we need to take our source voltage, which is 12, and divide that by our total resistance in the circuit. So the current in our circuit is the total voltage in the circuit, which is 12, divided by the total resistance in the circuit. But, as you might have guessed, we need to find that. So our total resistance and I promise this is the last back step we'll do, can be found by considering we have these two components in series, so they add together, so our 12 ohms adds with this component here, which itself is two resistances in parallel, which, since resistors in parallel are found using this equation here, we remember our 4.57 is the resistance of this lamp here, that means the resistance of this component is going to be 1 over 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4.57. Which gives me 14.6 ohms, two three significant figures, which means we can put our number in here, which gives me 0 0.822 amps, which we can now put over here, and that gives me 9.86 volts which we can lastly put in over here, where I get 2.14 volts. Question two. The electric field lines between two parallel plates are shown above. Clearly label the positive plate on the above diagram. The definition of field lines is that they always point from positive towards negative. What that means is that our positive plate is the top one. Describe the field between the plates and explain how the diagram shows this. The key things you should notice is that the field lines are parallel to each other and they are also equally spaced. What that tells us is that the electric field strength between these two plates is the same at all locations. So let's write that. The field lines are parallel and equally spaced. This shows that the electric field is uniform between the plates. An experiment is carried out on the surface of the Earth, g equals 9.8 meters per second per second, where a charged droplet of mass 5.87 times 10 to the minus 10 kgs is held stationary between a different set of parallel plates. The voltage across the plates is 240 volts, the distance between the plates is 2 centimeters, and we are first asked to add labeled arrows to show the two forces acting on the stationary droplet. First of all, we know that there must be a gravitational force, which is going to be directed downwards. And now since the droplet is stationary, we know that this force must be balanced by an equal and opposite force, which must be our electrostatic force. Calculate the number of elementary charges on the stationary droplet. You should start by calculating the weight of the droplet by using our equation here where the elementary charge is positive 1.61 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The equation that we'll want to use to find the charge is that our electric force is equal to the electric field strength multiplied by the charge. The problem with that is that we neither know the electric force nor do we know the electric field strength. To find the electric field strength, we can use our equation here where we were given the voltage of 240 and the distance of two centimeters. Remembering to write our two centimeters in meters. And that gives me 12,000 volts per meter. So we now have the electric field, but we still don't have the force. Something we do know about the force, however, is that it must be equal to the weight force. These two forces up here must be balanced. Now using our equation here, we know the weight force is mass times gravity, where our mass is right here, 5.87 times 10 to the minus 10. 
and our gravitational acceleration is our 9.8 here. And that gives me 5.75 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons. Which means we have everything we need to use this equation. First of all, we'll solve for charge by dividing both sides by E. And now we just need to put our numbers in. And that gives me 4.79 times 10 to the minus 13 coulombs. But we're not done, because we're not trying to find the charge, we're actually trying to find the number of elementary charges, which means we need to take this charge and divide it by our elementary charge here. Which gives me 2.98 times 10 to the 6 to 3 significant figures. Question 3. The diagram below shows a simple electric motor. The direction of the conventional current through the wire is shown by the arrows. And down here we are given a bunch of lengths. We see that the length of A, B and C, D is 5 centimetres, which means that this dimension here is 5 centimetres, and that the dimension B, C is 2 centimetres. We're also given the magnetic field strength, and also the current in the wire. Calculate the value of the force on the side AB. This is given by the equation F equals BIL, where B is our magnetic field strength, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla, I is our 2.3 amp current, and the length of the wire in the field is this length here, which is 5 centimetres or 0.05 metres. And that gives me 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. For each part of the wire, state the direction of the force as either left, right, up, down, out of the page, into the page, or no force. So for this, we need to use our right hand slap rule. First of all, the direction of our magnetic field is going to be pointing from north to south. So if we take our right hand and point them along these field lines towards south, and then if we consider our length of wire here, our current is going in this upwards direction, so, keeping our fingers pointed in the direction of the magnetic field, pointing our thumb upwards from A to B, we find that our palm is facing into the page, which is the direction of the force. Now for BC, we see that the charges are moving in this direction here, which is going with the magnetic field. In this situation, the charges will not experience any force at all. Now looking at the section CD, we see that the charges are moving downwards. Applying our right hand rule, if we once again point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and direct our thumb downwards from C to D, we will see that our palm faces upwards out of the page, which is the direction of our force. Question C. The diagram below shows a simple generator. The coil contains 60 turns of wire and is rotated clockwise. We have our same lengths and also the same magnetic field strength, and we are asked to calculate the value of the induced voltage in the coil when the wire AB is cutting the field at 6.2 meters per second. For this we can use the equation V equals BVL, but this alone will only give us the voltage for one turn. So to get the voltage for 60 turns, we need to times this by 60. And then furthermore, not only do we have the section AB producing the voltage, but we also have the section DC, which means we have two lots of 60 turns. Our magnetic field strength is our usual 4.7 times 10 to the minus 3. Our velocity is our 6.2. Our length is our 5 centimeters or 0.05 meters. And that gives me 0.17 volts to two significant figures. The diagrams below show the coil in the generator being rotated clockwise. In which positions of the four positions labelled A to D above would the largest voltage be generated and no voltage be generated. And so remembering that our field lines are cutting like this, the maximum voltage is going to be generated when the velocity of the coil is at right angles to this field. We see this at position A and also position C. At position B and D, we see that the coil is traveling with the field. 
In these situations, no voltage will be generated at all. Use physics principles to explain your answer to part I. So, as I just explained, the maximum voltage is generated when the coil velocity is at 90 degrees to the field. This occurs at A and C. No voltage is generated when the coil velocity is with the field, as it is in B and D. Clearly indicate on each appropriate diagram, or diagrams, the direction of any electron movement caused by charge separation when the coil rotates. And so we already figured out that there will be no electron movement in B and D at all. In sections A and C, we need to use the right hand rule to figure out the direction. So knowing that our field points towards south, we can direct our fingers that way. Knowing that the velocity in position A of say this section of the coil here is upwards, as it is in section C. If we point our thumb in that direction and keep our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field towards south, we will see that our palms indicate a force in this direction here. However, this force is considering positive particles. The electrons that we're considering are instead negative. This means that the force they will experience will be in the opposite direction. And we're done.